Ian Jessup on CFAX 1070. Welcome back. Carolyn Yardley is a fabulous Victoria artist who coined the term squirrelism to describe her signature style of artwork featuring squirrel heads on human figures. In 2008, she trademarked her name Carolyn to use for her artwork. Along comes the U.S. toy giant Mattel, wanting to register Caroline in Canada for its Caroline Abbott doll and historical character from the U.S. side of the War of 1812. And a legal battle ensues. Joining us to talk about her fight with Mattel is Carolyn Yardley. Carolyn, thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks, Ian, for having me. It's been a few years since you and I have uh, chatted. I should tell our listeners that uh, when Carolyn had her web uh, design business, uh, I was a client there for a while. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you did very, very excellent work. And here we are. And here we are. Who would have thought it? <laughs> Who would have thought it? <laughs> now, before we before we get into your battle with Mattel, how, tell us how you went from being the co-owner of a web development company to packing it in and becoming an artist. Ah, well, that's a very, very long story. <laughs> well, we've but, got 25 um, minutes. <laughs> in a nutshell, um, the uh, Star Global Advanced IT Corp., which was the uh, web development and software application company that we had, um, we started in 1997, so we pioneered um, within the industry. And in 2010, a combination of my business partner and I decided that uh, we'd been doing it since we'd left university and we were now approaching different milestones in our lives and we wanted to try some different things. And uh, for me, that meant uh, then looking at what it was that um, I was planning on doing for the rest of my life and also staying located in Victoria uh, because I have uh, some roots here and family here and things like that. So it prevented me from perhaps moving to larger city centers. And so I went to school for fine art and art history back many years ago, and I decided that I wanted to give it a shot. I'd been told back then in the early 90s, late 80s, that um, <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make a, a living as an artist, and I thought I didn't want to then be approaching another milestone in my life and not having actually um, given it a shot and have any regrets. So were you artistic all your life? Um, I won the Oak Bay Tea Party Poster Contest five years in a row. Oh, Wow. <laughs> 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 so maybe I, <laughs> my mom and dad think so. Yeah. How did you come up with the idea uh, idea of squirrel heads on human figures? Well, that originally uh, came about as we have a lot of squirrels in in the area and in our yard, um, but eventually it became um, it morphed into meaning um, a mask that we wear. Um, a lot of times we make uh, stereotypes in social scenarios with people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the mask of the squirrel face and the repetition of it is meant to act like a bit of cognitive dissonance uh, and the humor that when you're meeting people, you are the squirrels, squirrel realism, that you're making these stereotypes of the characters based only on their clothing and hairstyle attributes. And it also is meant to mean there was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon back in the late 60s called Secret Squirrel, and um, one of the characters was a spy. <laughs> so you, you had this idea brewing in your head all the time. Well, I came to it in the mid-2000s. Okay. <laughs> so you and your partner, Graham, uh, you decide to go your separate ways. You become an artist. My now, business partner, Graham, right? Yeah, yes. yeah your business partner, Graham. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, then what? What did you do? Uh, well, then I, um, it was an overlap. I was still, um, we still uh, were active downtown with the office and staff and all the rest of it. And mm -hmm. so I started taking um, some evening classes to refresh myself. Um, and I was painting in the evening, so I'd work all day, and then I'd come home and I'd start painting during the night. And then I also started, I got my website up, I had my logo designed, I started putting all of the pieces in place for the merchandising, including, of course, registering, hiring a trademark lawyer and registering my trademark. So take us take us through that battle. You registered your trademark uh, name, Carolyn, in 2008. And, That's when uh, I hired the trademark lawyer, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take us through that and what Mattel wants to do. Well, first of all, um, I have the trademark registered um, for not only paintings, but I actually have it registered for items um, such as bookmarks and books and dolls and um, cards and a couple of other items. But I've been mentioning those specifically because that's where we overlap. 
And so when you have a registered trademark like I do in Canada, um, anyone can then uh, come along and say, I want you to prove you're using it. So that's mm-hmm. called a Section 45. And so uh, Gowlings, Lafer and Henderson, um, on behalf of the organization American Girl, they asked the Registrar of Trademarks to forward me a Section 45 notice. And it's really to get Deadwood off the registry. It's, um, I think it's, a, it's actually good. I actually believe in the trademark law. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a expungement proceeding so that then it's up to the trademark holder, such as myself, to then furnish evidence that I am, in fact, using it for the purposes um, that I have registered it for. And so then I have to then submit my evidence, which I have done. I've submitted evidence to the trademarks office already at the end of uh, December 2013, um, waiting for my review. And um, if I my evidence isn't sufficient enough, then I will potentially be expunged, even if it's just for some particular wares and services. And then... Uh, Gowlings, Lafleur, and Henderson will be able to move forward with the application that they made um, for Caroline, which is a doll product line um, under the American Girl brand. And they'll be able to, if I get expunged, they'll be able to remove the examiner's objections. So it's a very, you know, procedural, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and that's uh, where we're at. Is I'm at a review, uh, the review time. But Section 45, which uh, you have to show you're using it, I mean, you have a website, you sell your paintings and uh, other products. That shouldn't be a problem, should it? Well, like I say, I've already filed all my evidence. Yeah. And so that's what I've been, my message has been talking about small businesses, making sure that you, first of all, have a contingency fund, because even if you have the evidence and you've been using it in products and labels, and and you also have to be selling um, the items as well too, so proving your um, sales records and uh, those types of things, so keeping proper accounting records. Um, you also um, need to make sure that you don't have a computer that you didn't do a backup file on that left your office one day. <laughs> so making sure you have proper records that they're up to date, because this is, could have happened in 10 years from now, mm-hmm. and your evidence can't be eight years old or 10 years old, you have to keep immediately proceeding, having received the letter, you have to um, show evidence for three years. So the onus is on you to show it, yeah. It is, and it's uh, really what I've been talking about um, for small business is the costs. So even if you, like myself, have it registered, you've been using it, and you have proof of use, and you filed your, well, hold on, back up, in order to file the evidence, you need to have a contingency fund between three and five thousand dollars to hire a lawyer to be able to file it on your behalf. You can't just send them a, a note and say, you know, here mm-hmm. here it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how long does this process take? Um, well, in my situation, um, I received my Section Forty Five letter in February twenty thirteen, and. Through a series of events, we were trying to have a coexistence agreement, ultimately, at the end of the day, which um, would have very bare bones, um, would have meant that a covenant to say that I would not challenge the use of them using their mark in Canada, and that they would not challenge me using my mark in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, for us to both be able to use our what I, you know, consider to be their kind of unique marks, but are not according to perhaps the trademarks office, but use our marks for our respective wares and services and go about our business. Um, They wanted me to sign the covenant to not challenge theirs, but they, um, Gowlings, Lafleur, and Henderson, through our lawyers, um, it was not uh, apparent or it was declined to provide me with reciprocal protection. So it sounds to me like, uh, because you're a small business person, that they wanted to uh, use the force of Mattel's deep pockets to kind of um, pressure you Well, and through no, part of, through no fault of their own. I mean, it's certainly not their fault that they're a $600 million corporation, and it's certainly not their fault that I'm not. <laughs> no. So I'm practical about, you know, it's the situation itself. However... Um, you know, there's lots of things I think that could have been done to provide me with um, not having to go down the long 
the super long road. And there's, of course, a lot of other things that happen, of course, weaving throughout the, the story in the background, I'm sure. But um, it's, uh, yeah. How much How much has this cost you so far? Um, I was originally quoted between three and 5000 but it's peaked over 10000 now, mostly, well, in part at least, because of the coexistence agreement that didn't work out. So how is this uh, – I, I, I'm fascinated by – I mean, I've known you for many, many years, and uh, I know when, when someone puts a roadblock like this in front of you, um, you're not going to stand for it. <laughs> you, you're the type of person that will fight back. Well, I, I like things to, you know, be, um, I like to be able to have the same, um, I guess, rights yeah. as anyone else. So in the terms of fairness, um, cost aside, I think that a small business owner should be allowed to have the same rights and privileges to be able to defend something that they're using, that they've registered and all the rest of it. Um, it's always a shame to see an organization not be able to perhaps get to the next step if it's funding based. Yeah. I mean, that's always a bit of a shame. And so, um, I also don't want the Carolyn of today to, um, cut the legs off the Carolyn of tomorrow. So my business plan, Carolyn Yardley Omni Media, I mean, the name itself, which was, you know, I got back again, um, mid 2000s. The plan has always been a growth model with multiple merchandise pieces, taking the brand of the paintings and the character I created through multiple dimensions. And um, just because I'm relatively in early stages, comparatively speaking to American Girl, whom the brand of dolls started by one woman out of her basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that was 20 years ago. I certainly don't want to uh, prohibit Carolyn of 20 years from now from having any regrets. I guess, that. yeah, I guess one of the reasons I, I, I mention that is because uh, I know you and uh, I, I know you will fight back. And I think Mattel uh, is taking on the wrong person. <laughs> Carolyn, when we come back, we have to take a commercial break, but when we come back, I want to ask you uh, some questions about your painting. You okay with that? Absolutely. Great. We're talking to Carolyn Yardley. She's a Victoria artist. Uh, you can uh, find her work. Give us your website, Carolyn. It's www.carolyn.com, and that's C-A-R-O-L-L-Y-N-E. Who designed your website? Star Global Advanced. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Her former company. <laughs> we'll take a break and come back. Engaging Talk, Ian Jessup on CFAX 1070. Victoria artist Carolyn Yardley is our guest. Uh, she has a signature style of artwork featuring squirrel heads on human figures, which she calls squirrelism. Carolyn, how long does a painting take you to do? Um, uh, well, I do timesheets for all of my paintings. <laughs> do you really? I do. It was from the the old days of timesheets, electronic timesheets for staff, right? We oh, all yeah. had to do them <laughs> for projects to know how long projects actually took. So that carried over, and I do timesheets for paintings. So um, a painting that is on average 24 by 36 can take me between 130 to 140 hours. When they get larger than that, then we're looking closer to 200 hours. 200 hours. Yes. I do uh, style in the old masters, so I do a grisaille layer to start, uh, which is a black and white layer, and then I do the color layer on top, and then I do the final touches. So uh, it's fairly labor intensive, and I use really tiny little brushes. <laughs> do you really? I do. Yeah. What um, is there a particular time of day that painting is better for you? Um, I usually like to um, do sort of a eleven o'clock to. Um, five o'clock, sort of the, that starting to get ready at about ten o'clock, get myself all prepped and everything, and then be sitting in the chair. And I do about six to eight hours every day. Um, so I do a lot of stretching, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any? What do you do on days when you think, "Oh God, I just I, I need a break." Um, well, just push yourself through it, like or you take a break. Every, well, just like everybody does with work, I actually approach it from a business perspective. So I'm probably very unusual um, calling me, you know, in the same words as many artists. I don't know. But the artists that I follow and the artists that I um, admire uh, 
are doing it as work. And so um, we have very set schedules, and we approach it just like everybody else does um, in their shift work or nine to five or whatever. Yeah, this is your job. It's your job, and so yeah. you get down there and you do it. Do you have any mentors? Um, I do. Um, I have some that are um, historically speaking. I have some that are current and local. Um, I, of course, like the Surrealists. Um, I like Otto Dix and Dolly, and um, mm-hmm. Mark Ryden is one of my, my favorites. I also like um, Randy Cook and Noah Becker and Yayo Kusama and Cecil Beaton and, um, you know, lots of different variety. I have a, an eclectic variety of influences. Now, Carolyn, when you first uh, put the squirrel head on a human figure, uh, what sort of reaction did you get from from others? Um, well, it's nothing new, globally speaking. So, <laughs> it's a kind of a form in pop surrealism. Pop surrealism was started back in the 1970s in California. So, it's actually kind of a popular mode of artistic expression in California. Um, it's more unique to, I guess, Vancouver Island. Yeah, um, that's what I was. That's what I was <laughs> looking at. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was. Uh, received, I guess, that it was not a bear, <laughs> 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 and it wasn't a flower. <laughs> <laughs> what does what does painting do for you that uh, web development design didn't? Well, as the as the role that I played with Star Global, um, I, as the business owner, business builder, blah blah blah, you know. A debt collector, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I did the art direction there, so I was the creative director. So I worked mostly in uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, and um, I would say actually that was actually quite fulfilling. I really enjoyed um, that. Was actually very detailed work as well too. I was always working in pixels. I was always thinking about um, the brand, um, how it was going to be perceived, um, how we were going to be showcasing each unique business to their audience. And then all of the infrastructure that went behind it, because we were a software application, so we had a lot. Of, we had a lot of um, custom uh, database work, um, taking things from Access Database and Excel and recreating them, and and things like that. Um, but creatively speaking, I really, really enjoyed it. Now, our, um, doing a different medium, it's still very, very detailed work. I still feel like I'm building a brand. I still feel like all of the characters are becoming a bit. You know, each one is a bigger part of the whole, and um, I still feel like it's. Um, I still feel like I feel like it's very, very, very similar in many ways. I don't know um, if I'm explaining it very well, but no, you are because uh, you know. I guess I'm. I have the, I have the advantage of, of of knowing your previous work uh, in web design development and and what you did. And I think what you're doing now is you're actually are building you're building a brand of your own as opposed to you and your business partner. Well, and opposed to also helping over 700 clients throughout North America. With their branding, we just did one tiny part of it, yeah. um, which was the web-based um, solution component. But you know, we did that over and over and over again, like I say, for clients throughout North America. And it was always like you, you know, you finished the project. We had a lot of people who stayed with us for you know maintenance reasons until that period of time um, technology changed and people could maintain things themselves, which was great. Um, but it's definitely a hyper focus on one company brand, which is the Carolyn brand. Yeah. And you don't have any of those damn clients to deal with anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get lonely when you're painting? Um, I spend an awful lot of time by myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I listen to a lot of podcasts and I listen to a lot of educational uh, uh, components. So there's a lot of things you can listen to out there on the, the interwebs today so that doesn't make you, I guess, feel completely isolated. Where do you see your art taking you in the next, uh, where do you see your art going in the next uh, five to ten years? Um, Well, I've always had fairly big dreams, so um, I don't want to trip over anything uh, now. I'd rather just let's wait and see. That's not like you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I wish you well with Mattel, and uh, I hope you, you win. (laughs) <laughs> I think everyone in Victoria does. I mean, Carolyn versus Goliath. It's a great well, I story. Think, 
I thank everybody for their support and everybody who's covered it. And thank you so much, Ian. It's really been a pleasure talking yeah. to you. <laughs> it's always fun talking to you. Tell us, uh, tell listeners uh, your website so they can get a look at your work. Of course. It's www.carolyn.com, and the spelling of Carolyn is C-A-R-O-L-L-Y-N-E. Thanks, Carolyn. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so okay. much, Ian. Bye. Bye. Carolyn Yardley, Victoria artist, taking on uh, U.S. toy giant Mattel.